Howdy. In this problem, we have the following situation. We have an incline of 20 degrees, and we have a wood block with a mass of 2.0 kilograms. The wood block is launched up. Um, so this is 30 degrees. And the block's initial speed is 10 meters per second. Initially, in the first case that we have to look at, there is no friction. And the question is, what is the vertical height that the block is going to reach uh, from its starting point, so from over here? So first things first, we have our situation, our pictorial representation. So we can go right away to the free body diagram. To make things easier, we're going to align the X axis with the surface, the horizontal, well, the, the, the surface of the incline. And in that situation, so over here we have gravity pulling down. The velocity is in, in the upwards direction, it's positive. And so there's a friction in the, in the negative direction. And there's the normal, which is always there. Those are the three forces. So over here, we're going to have mg. This angle is 30 degrees. Then we have the normal aligned with the y-axis. And we have friction, uh, kinetic friction in the negative direction. The velocity should not be drawn in the free body diagram. Only forces go in the free body diagram. But we know that the velocity is in the, in the positive direction. And that's why friction is in the negative direction. OK, so um, this angle over here is 30 degrees. Uh, and we want to know h. So this is the opposite side. Um, that's opposite over hypotenuse, which will be equal to the sine of 30, sine of theta. I'm going to put theta over here and theta equals 30 degrees. It's a little bit better. So then h, which is, which is what we want to know, is going to be equal to this times the hypotenuse. This hypotenuse really is this displacement in the in x in the horizontal direction. Sorry, the the plane direction. So we can put it over here. So the height is just the displacement uh, times sine of thirty degrees. So let's pin it over here. So now we have 
next thing that you should do after getting your free body diagram is to write down the second law for x for the x and the y directions uh, from your free body diagram. So sum of forces in x minus kinetic friction minus mg. Um, and it's only a component of it. So it will be the sine of 30 sine theta. That's equals mass times acceleration in x. Sum of forces in y, we have negative mg. And now we're going to, we want this component. So we use cosine theta and the normal. And that's equal, equal, that's equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. And we know that this is moving on the surface. There is no acceleration in y. So this is equal to 0. So the next thing that we have to remember is that the friction is equal to mu. So if it's kinetic, it's mu kinetic times the normal. And so we need to find the normal force before we can plug in something in there. So the normal, we can get it from this second equation. Remember, there's um, two equations. So you can ask for two variables. So n is one of them. n is, this is negative over here. So it moves to the side as positive. Right, so the normal is mg cosine theta. And so then the kinetic friction is mu k mg cosine theta. And so we can put that in our equation for, for x. So sum of forces in x minus mu k mg cosine theta. OK. So we don't need this anymore. I'm going to get rid of them. So now we can get the acceleration in x. Okay. The acceleration from equation number one in x is minus, and we have two negatives in there, mm. Mm. we have mg here and here. So we can take them out, minus mg. mu k cosine theta plus, because we have this negative out here, uh, sine theta, uh, all of that divided by the mass. So we can get rid of the masses the acceleration doesn't depend on the mass as expected because all objects, no matter what the mass is, fall at the same rate. We saw that before. All right, so this is the acceleration in the x direction. So then we know that at the very end, the velocity is going to be zero. 
So we have from this kinematic equation that can help us there. So in this case, everything is in the in the horizontal direction, right? Uh, this final velocity is zero. Mm, well, let me see if I want to leave it like that for a little bit. Mm. It's fine. So let's calculate first. So the, the problem asks for two questions, the vertical height and then the speed that the box is going to have when it slides back down. So let's do the vertical height first. Um, we have that this is the height, so this implies that AX is H divided by sine theta. So we can put that in here. H is what we want. The final velocity is going to be zero. The initial velocity is given is 10 meters per second. The acceleration in X, uh, we just calculated it from, uh, from Newton's laws. Okay, so if we want to solve for H, this is gonna be minus the initial X squared and then sine theta divided by two times the acceleration in x that's equal to h which is the height that we are looking for so i'm going to put this equation in here minus the not x squared sine theta divided by two a x Okay, so let's get it. In the first scenario, there is no friction. If there is no friction, that means that mu k is equal to zero, right? So I'm gonna put it over here. Um, minus 10 meters per second squared sine of 30 degrees divided by twice negative g is 9.8 meters per second squared and then this one um well mu k is zero cosine of 30 degrees plus sine of 30 degrees. So the quantity on top mm, I don't want to keep this one here so I'll just replace it in here. So it's 10 squared. Um, I guess one thing that we can do is we have a negative here and a negative here, so we can get rid of them. So this will be 10 squared and sine 30 is uh, one half. So up here we have Uh, 50 
meter square second squared. Over here, this is two times 9.8, .8, it's 19.6. meter per second squared and zero times anything, it's zero. And um, times sine theta, sine theta, theta is one half. So sine 30. So this is just 9.8 meters per second squared. Right, and so the height without friction is uh, 50 divided by 9.8. And so the height is 5.1. The seconds squared go away, one of the meters go away, and we have just meters here. So the height is 5.1 meters. So let's do it again for the case in which we do have friction. So in that case, uh, we have the negative 10 meter per second squared. We know that sine theta is just one half divided by two um, mu k and mu k is um, zero point two. So mu k cosine theta. So cosine of 30 degrees plus one half, which is the sine theta. Okay, so we know that this is gonna be on, we're missing a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, the G. So this negative goes away with this negative, and we know that this on top is 50. meters squared per second squared. Um, so now cosine 30 is point eighty six sixty. So it's actually square root of three over two. But anyway, uh, so times point two This is gonna be 0.173 plus 0.5, that's 0.673 times two, 1.346, then times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's 13.2, 13.19 meters per second squared. So second squares go away, one of the meters go away, we end up with meters. 50 divided by the 13.2 is um, 3.79 meters, so approximately 3.8 meters.
right? So we solved it for the general case. And then we just plugged in the appropriate uh, mu k, either 0 or 0.2, and realize that these equations hold. They are the same, exactly the same equations, no matter what the angle is. The actual numbers are going to change once you change the, the angle or you change the coefficient, but the equations do not change. And that's one of the cool things about, about physics. So this problem is getting a little long. So I'm going to do the second part of this in a different recording. Thank you.